Hello there, Internet. I hope you've been enjoying this series on how Madden fails to simulate football. This will be the fifth episode of that series, and if you haven't already, I highly recommend that you watch the previous four episodes because they all kind of combine to act as a framework for the topic of this episode. And if you have been watching and enjoying the series so far, then I really hope you'll consider dropping me some support on Patreon. Patreon contributions will go towards the ongoing licensing of software that I use to create these videos because, you know, you can't just buy a version of Photoshop or Premiere anymore and use it for as long as it's useful to you. No, you have to subscribe to software now. Ugh. And apparently also subscribe to Heated Seats. Hmm. Patreon funds also go towards the maintenance of my personal blog site, and it will help offset the purchase of future research materials. Between now and the end of October, fan and mega fan tier patrons will have access to a poll to vote on the topic for the next episode of this series. As a patron, you'll not only be supporting this content creation, but you'll also have a voice in the future of this channel and this series. I'd like to take this moment real quick to sincerely thank my current patrons. Your support really helps. The previous episode was, of course, about long snapping and it included proposals for adding both ratings-based and skill-based mechanics for botched snaps into the game. Botching a snap might lead to a bad kick, or a kick being blocked, or possibly the snap sailing over the head of the holder or punter for a fumble. But even though I want botched snaps to be represented in Madden, because, you know, they are a part of football, there is one big caveat. There is one criticism of the idea of botched snaps that I did not really address in that previous episode because I wanted to save it for its own episode, for this episode. That criticism is what would happen immediately after that botched snap, during the ensuing mad dash to recover the football. One of the biggest and most long-standing AI and animation problems with Madden is its loose ball scenarios. Putting bad snaps into the game is simply not a good idea, unless Tibron and EA also address long-standing problems with how Madden handles a live ball being on the ground. But hey, they do have muffed punt returns, onside kicks, strip sacks, and just regular old fumbles in the game already. So once again, I ask, why are all of these things in the game, but botched snaps are apparently a bridge too far? Anyway, some of the issues with the pass rush that I mentioned in the third episode would also be alleviated by better loose ball logic, as the excessive amount of strip sacks in Madden 17 and Madden 20 might not have been such a big problem if the players on the field were smarter about recovering their own fumbles, and if scooping and scoring weren't so easy for defenders. But I'm starting to get ahead of myself. Since fumbles are a major hang-up for the last two episodes in this series, let's now look at how Madden fails to model fumbles, fumble recoveries, onside kicks, and other loose ball situations. Based on my gameplay experience with Madden over the years, the god-awful implementation of loose ball situations seems, at least to me, to be mostly a problem with Madden's reliance on pre-canned animations. The reliance on canned animations breaks loose ball situations in two distinct ways, and I'll be covering both of those in this video. The first is at the point of the fumble itself, in which the fumbling player, and also the tackling player who caused the fumble, are often locked in canned animations and are therefore completely oblivious to the fact that the fumble happened. And secondly, the player who does eventually recover the fumble only has a few animations available to him and they really do not line up correctly or look good or lead to believable outcomes. Let's start with the first way in which Madden fails to simulate loose ball situations. Players not recovering their own fumble. This is largely the result of the player being bound to a pre-canned tackle animation and sometimes also a pre-canned recovery animation. Despite the fumble keeping the play alive, the player is unable to branch out of that canned tackle animation in order to react appropriately to the fumble. 
he is stuck, following through with the tackle animation as if he still possesses the ball, and then also stuck casually getting up off the ground as if the play had been blown dead even though it hadn't been. It is only after the completion of this falling down and getting up animation that the player's awareness suddenly snaps back on and he can finally react to the fumble and go after the ball. But by then, it's almost always too late for the fumbling player to meaningfully impact the play, let alone actually be the one who recovers the ball. The same is often true of the defender who causes the fumble. He also gets stuck in a tackle animation and a recovery animation, without being able to branch out of either. Also, as a quick aside, I've only ever seen fumbles happen in recent Madden games during solo tackle animations. I never see them happening during any of the group tackles or add-on tackles that the game supposedly supports. I've also never seen one defender hit and stand up the runner, and then have a second defender come in and punch or swipe the ball out of the runner's grip. Maybe it does happen, but I've just never seen it. I don't know. If you have seen it, feel free to let me know in the comments or post your own examples. Anyway, while these animations are running their course, neither player is able to recognize that the fumble has occurred, and neither player is able to react to the fumble or attempt to recover it. Even if the football literally falls into the lap of the runner or the tackling defender, they are both utterly incapable of attempting to grab the ball because they are either completely unaware that the play is still alive, or even if they are aware, they are locked into animations and can't do anything about it. In real football, players will routinely try to corral the ball as it is popping out of their hands, and even if they are down on the ground, they will try to crawl, scratch, and claw to reach for the ball and grab it or fall on it. Now, that does not mean that players always have a chance to recover their own fumble. A fumbling quarterback with a 300-pound defensive lineman laying on top of him might not be able to do much of anything except lay there, but he'll at least try to regain control of the ball while he's going down. In this example, Patrick Mahomes is being tossed around by a Bengals defensive end, Sam Hubbard. There's not much Mahomes can do, but he is at least aware that the ball is on the ground, and he reaches out his arms to try to pick it back up, which is a far cry from anything that anybody in Madden ever does. What is particularly frustrating is that Tiburon does have animations for this kind of thing in the game except they never use them in appropriate situations. Here was a play in which Kirk Cousins is sacked. It's not a fumble, the ball comes out after he goes to the ground and it's ruled dead, but he still turns around and reaches for the ball as if he thinks it might be a fumble. This is the only time that I ever recall seeing an animation like this, and it wasn't even called a fumble on the field. So why the heck doesn't stuff like this happen during actual strip sack situations in modern Madden games? Which also brings me to the point that players are taught by coaches to try to recover a loose ball even if they know that the play is in fact dead, on the off chance that the referee fails to blow the whistle. Football players are taught and drilled to pick up or fall on a football that is on the ground, this is why you'll often see defensive backs pick up the football after an incomplete pass, because if you see the ball on the ground, you pick it up. But aside from that one fluke instance that I just showed you from Madden, you never see this behavior in Madden either. Although, I have actually seen it in the older NCAA football games while I was playing through those games in order to do research for my video on the uh, NCAA football games recruiting mechanics. But you know who isn't oblivious to the fumble? All the other players around it. They all react instantly to the fumble happening. Sometimes they react so quickly that nearby defenders are already reaching to pick up the ball before it has completely fallen out of the runner's hands yet. This brings me to the second major way that Madden fails to simulate loose ball situations. It's poor animations for recovering fumbles. As I mentioned before, football players are taught to pick up or fall on a loose football that is on the ground. In fact, they are taught to fall on it like a soldier jumping on a hand grenade and then cradle it in a fetal position. The reason for this is that falling on the football and cradling it is the safest and most reliable way to secure the recovery and maintain possession of the ball. Reaching down for the ball, especially while still in motion, makes it much harder to grasp the football and hold on to it, 
especially with up to 21 other people also trying to swipe the ball out of your hands. For whatever reason, Madden has, for years or even decades now, neglected to utilize animations of players doing what they are taught to do in real life, which is falling on and cradling a loose football. It's particularly annoying because Madden does have animations for this sort of thing. The game just rarely bothers to trigger one, favoring instead to overutilize these animations of players reaching down and scooping up the football, often without breaking stride. Since these animations rarely, if ever, line up correctly with a football that is bouncing or rolling around, the software will usually resort to teleporting the football into the hands of the player who succeeded at his die roll for picking up the ball, because, you know, this is Madden, so physics and relative positioning be damned. Madden has simply never had robust animations for falling on the football. It does not have animation branches that allow down players to crawl on the ground to try to grab the football. It rarely plays animations of player losing their balance while scooping up the ball and then falling and rolling with it. And it also does not have animations for players failing to maintain possession of the football, resulting in it squirting out of their hands or them accidentally kicking the ball with their feet or pushing it around on the ground in a failed attempt to grab it. You know, something like the infamous Holy Roller play. That sort of thing never happens in Madden. Unless, of course, the game glitches out, and the FIFA AI activates, and everybody forgets what sport they're playing, and just start kicking the ball around without anybody ever attempting to reach down and pick it up at all. Because the game has so few options for fumble recovery animations, it overuses the scoop animation, which also leads to excessive scoop and score opportunities for defenses, especially in the case of a strip sack. Defensive linemen don't exactly have a reputation for being the most dexterous individuals on the football field when it comes to handling the football. Yet in Madden, they are able to flawlessly and effortlessly scoop up a fumbled football mid-stride and then sprint unobstructed into the end zone. Picking up the fumble doesn't even seem to consume all that much, if any, of a player's stamina meter, meaning that a 300-pound defensive tackle will still have enough gas in the tank to pick up the ball and then outrun the pursuing offensive players into the end zone. This plain and simply does not represent the sport of football. Yes, every now and then, a lucky defensive lineman does have an opportunity to pick up a fumble in the backfield and run it into the end zone, but it is very rare. It definitely does not happen anywhere near as often as it happens in Madden. The absolute ease with which defenders can scoop and run is further confounded by the fact that fumbled footballs never bounce around unpredictably in Madden the way that real-life footballs are infamous for doing. They just land on the ground and sit there, waiting for the first player with a successful recovery die roll to telekinetically force-pull the ball into his hands. In fact, the scoop-and-run problem has been so egregious, especially on strip sacks since Madden 17, that in order to keep games against the CPU more competitive, I will usually slide, dive, run out of bounds, or just let myself be tackled after picking up fumbles in the backfield instead of simply walking into the end zone for the go-ahead score, especially if the fumble occurred in a lot of traffic and should have been more hotly contested. This has been a completely neglected aspect of the game for at least a whole decade now. The last and perhaps only attempt that EA has made to address this was when they introduced the Fight for the Fumble button-mashing quick-time tug-of-war minigame back in, like, what was that, Madden 10? It was an awful mechanic. But at least it tried to represent a more realistic pile-up to recover a football, and, you know, in its defense, using a scripted cutscene that almost completely hides what's going on with the football at the bottom of the pile, is a brilliant idea for covering up the limitations in the animation libraries. So, kudos to whoever thought of that. It's just too bad that when Tiburon dropped that feature, they didn't think to go back and flesh out those limited animation libraries that originally caused them to resort to such a silly, but also kind of clever, trick.
Problems with loose ball physics and awareness are not limited to fumbles either. Problems with Tiburon's code also pop up when the ball is in the air. Since at least the introduction of the Frostbite engine in Madden 18, there has been this recurring problem in which the ball can get stuck repeatedly bouncing off of a player's shoulders or helmet. The player will run along with the ball and the ball will bounce along with him, but no player will ever try to reach out and grab the ball. It will usually just keep bouncing along with the running receiver or defensive back until it is taken out of bounds, usually resulting in an incomplete pass, but sometimes it erroneously results in a touchback or safety if it goes out the end zone. My initial hypothesis here was that there was a mismatch between the player awareness logic and the rule keeping logic, in which the players think the play is dead, but the rule keeping logic never records a dead ball. But upon further reflection and more playing, I'm not so sure about this. After all, the players continue to chase after the ball whether it's bobbling up in the air or rolling around on the ground, so they know the play is still alive. And sometimes, eventually, a player will actually reach out and pick up the ball. It might take a while, though. So I am, once again, left to believe that this is a problem with EA's dependence on canned animation and outcome scripting in order to run the game. Perhaps the player who is supposed to be catching the ball doesn't trigger the appropriate animation, and so nobody else is allowed to catch or pick up the ball either. I also want to say that I personally saw this problem much more frequently in the yard than in the 11 on 11 game modes in Madden 21 and Madden 22. When playing the yard, I also frequently see a possibly related bug in which tipped passes are incorrectly ruled as fumbles, which can then be recovered and advanced by either team, and which can even result in a score. I have yet to see this particular bug occur in the 11 on 11 game modes, but I wouldn't be surprised to see it there too. Also, problems like this are not unique to Madden either. Maximum Football actually had a bug in its 2019 and 2020 versions in which unfielded punts would bounce and roll without any player ever being able to reach down and pick up the ball. The ball would roll very slowly until it eventually goes out of bounds and the return team would begin their possession from that position on the field. It could trigger a touchback, but I don't think I ever saw it roll into the kicking team's end zone, so I'm not sure if it was possible to get a touchdown or a safety from this bug. But regardless, this is clearly a glitch in Madden, and I do not want to harp on EA and Tiburon for things that are obvious glitches that are not intended to be the way that the game works. Even the good entries in EA's sports games have bugs and glitches. Even better football games like NFL 2K and All Pro 2K have glitches. Any sufficiently complicated piece of software like this is going to have glitches. I do not want to be one of those content creators who just nitpicks every little glitch or logic mistake in the game because I do not want to come off as being mean-spirited to the programmers and artists who work hard on this game and who I believe at the end of the day are just as much victims of EA's abuse and exploitation as we, the consumers, are. Nor do I want any of my viewers to harass developers. Video game developers are already underpaid, overworked, have swords of Damocles hanging over their heads in the form of the constant threat of layoffs, and are often victims of burnout and stress-induced illness, and also apparently plenty of workplace sexual harassment and sexual abuse. So please, do not harass the developers or even the designers at EA and Tiburon. Rather, my series is focused more on how the intentional design of the game fails to simulate football. That is, the things that the executives at EA and Tiburon force their developers to put in the game or to break on purpose in order to control the outcome of plays or to sell a feature. I prefer to focus on problems with the game that are the result of high-level executive and design decisions, not just every little programming mistake. It wouldn't be unreasonable to blame the poor loose ball logic on a glitch. If it is a glitch, it would be unfair and possibly hypocritical of me to cover this topic in a video on this series. However, I considered this to be a problem with the fact that Madden is so reliant on canned animations. And that 
is by design. Tiburon could design these animations to branch or cancel and allow the fumbling player to attempt to recover the fumble, hopefully with a reasonable transition animation. But they don't. EA and Tiburon either don't see this lack of situational awareness as a problem, or they consider it such low priority that they haven't done anything about it since abandoning the fight for the fumble mechanic back in 2011. But if they can make the time to create a backyard arcade mode that nobody asked for, and then put SpongeBob SquarePants in that backyard arcade mode, they should have time to address this decade-old legacy problem with the actual football gameplay. That is willful negligence, and so I do consider it fair game as a topic for this series. But still, please don't harass the developers. Turning now to special teams. EA's decade-long neglect of loose ball mechanics has also rendered onside kicks almost completely impossible and unusable. Yeah, an onside kick is a fairly rare edge case scenario in real life football, so it does kind of make sense that it doesn't get as much development attention as more common scenarios like passing and tackling and running. But when onside kicks do happen, they are often plays that decide the outcome of an entire football match. So when an onside kick scenario occurs in Madden, the game should be much better at communicating to the user how to actually execute the onside kick, and it should have mechanics that are at least robust enough for the play to have a realistic chance of success and a somewhat realistic looking outcome. None of these is the case. Madden does not explain how to execute the kick to get that desired bounce, if it's even possible to get that bounce to begin with. So instead, onside kicks in Madden usually just travel in a completely straight line towards the receiving team, and the nearest player is almost always able to just magnetically suck the ball into his hands and run with it. He doesn't have to fall on it, there's no risk of the player muffing the recovery, and there's little risk of the player fumbling the ball if he attempts to actually run with the ball after recovering it. Uh, well, hold on. I apparently have a, uh angry baby to go take care of. Be right back. Okay, now that the baby is fed and playing comfortably in his bouncer, where the heck was I? Oh yeah, uh, not only is recovering the kick trivially easy for the receiving team in Madden, but the ease of scooping up the ball in stride means that the receiving team even has a shot at trying to return the onside kick possibly breaking through the line of coverage gunners and having a free path to the end zone for a walk-in score. In Madden's defense, plenty of other football games, including some of the good ones, don't get onside kicks correct either. Some other games might have different input methods that are a bit more intuitive about the angle at which the ball is actually being kicked. Other games might have better animations for picking up or falling on top of loose balls, but they don't always look accurate to the sport. Heck, Legend Bowl doesn't even attempt to model onside kicks, instead allowing the kicking team to opt to attempt to convert a very long fourth down from within their own territory, and then simply turning over the ball if the conversion fails. That's um, certainly one way to handle it, I guess. But that's not the rule in the NFL, at least not for the foreseeable future, so Madden is stuck with having onside kicks for the time being, which barely work. All that being said, 2K's football games do have a track record of looking much better than EA's games. I think All Pro Football 2K8 might have the best looking onside kicks of any football game I've seen. The ball does get a good bounce, and the ball will often get bobbled around before somebody finally falls on it. This was an improvement over NFL 2K5, which also had a pretty good bounce to the onside kick, but it was far too easy for players to snatch the ball out of the air. The problem with All-Pro Football 2K8 was that kicking in general just wasn't very intuitive. Issues with fumbles and fumble recovery also extend to other areas of special teams, such as attempting to field a kick, like a punt or a field goal that is short enough to be caught in the field of play, which I will just refer to simply as punts because most of the same rules apply. So 
Picking up a muffed punt or a punt that hit the ground and bounced or rolled isn't exactly a pretty thing to behold in Madden either. The game includes fair catches, and the necessity of calling for a fair catch in any given situation will vary from year to year in Madden. In either case, if a punt is muffed for whatever reason, the returner needs to be able to try to recover it, and the coverage gunners should not be able to simply pick up the ball mid-stride and walk into the end zone. In fact, I've seen some competitive players exploit the poor recovery animations by deliberately backing their returner away from fielding a punt so that they can let the ball hit the ground in the field of play and then pick it up with their returner in stride at a full sprint in order to give their returner a running head start against the coverage team. Returners should absolutely not be doing this in real football or, by extension, in Madden as this is a recipe for turning the ball over. College and NFL punt returners know that if the ball hits the ground, they need to just cut their losses and get away from it. Even if it bounced deeper into the return team's territory, it is still safer to just take the loss of field position for your offense than to risk muffing the recovery and giving the opposing offense the ball in prime scoring position. Hey, your defense did its job by forcing a fourth down punt. Don't try to be a hero and then force them to all have to get off the bench and run back out to try to stop a gimme touchdown because you screwed up. Furthermore, real life returners will also call out and gesture for their teammates to keep away from the ball so that their own blockers do not touch the ball, since if any member of the return team touches the football, whether it's deliberate or accidental, the ball becomes a live ball, which can be recovered by the kicking team. Madden has no mechanics for telling a punter to let a kick bounce, let alone any mechanics for the returner to tell his blockers to get away from the ball after it has bounced so that they don't touch it and make it live. I've seen my own teammates run into the ball and make it a live ball in Madden, and when it does happen, there is nothing that you or I or anybody as the user can do about it because there's just no mechanics in the game for it. You can try to switch control to the player closest to the ball, but if multiple players get close to the ball, you can't control everybody. You can only control one player at a time, so we are dependent on the other 10 players on our team having competent enough AI to know not to do stupid things like touching a uh, bouncing punt. Letting the punt continue to bounce or roll may result in it going into the end zone for a touchback. I have had to fight with my return man in Madden because I want him to let the ball bounce inside the 10-yard line or so in order to try to force a touchback, but the AI wants to field the punt, even if it means he'll lose 10, 15, or 19 yards of field position by doing so, or worse yet, give up a safety. So it is not just a simple matter of Madden having poor animations and AI for fumbling and recovering fumbles. It also has just bad animation for, dis for players to decide what the heck to actually do when the ball is on the ground. Before I go, I want to take a few minutes to talk about the future of this series on this channel. The football video game market is going to get awfully crowded here in the next few years with big publishers adding new games in addition to the myriad indie titles that are already out. In addition to Madden, Axis, Legend Bowl, Sunday Rivals, Retro Bowl, and a few other indie games, we'll be seeing the return of Maximum Football from Modus Games. Also, EA will be releasing its rebranded college football game, and 2K will be releasing one or more non-simulation NFL games. Uh, we still have no clue what the heck those are actually going to look like, but they're coming. And with the XFL supposedly starting back up in 2023, we could eventually see a licensed XFL tie-in game at some point. This begs the question, what will happen to this particular YouTube series once Madden isn't the only big dog in the yard anymore? The honest answer is, I don't really know yet. If EA Sports College Football uses the exact same engine as Madden and suffers from the exact same gameplay issues, perhaps I'll rebrand this series to be how EA Sports fails to simulate football.
And if we start seeing the same issues cropping up in other studios games, such as 2K or Modus, then perhaps I'll have to further broaden the scope to how video games fail to simulate football. But for the time being, I will continue to focus on Madden, as it is the only licensed simulation football game from a major publisher on the market for at least the next year or two. Expect this series to continue into the foreseeable future, at least until EA actually addresses the underlying issues that I keep bringing up. In the meantime, I hope you'll check out my retrospective about the recruiting mechanics in EA's old NCAA football games, and my hopes for how EA will implement the analogous recruiting mechanics in its upcoming EA Sports College football games. And I will continue to be creating critiques of the indie games as well, and sharing my thoughts about both what they do well and what they do wrong. As always, please remember to like, share, and comment on the video, and subscribe to the channel so that you can see notifications when future videos in this series come out. And of course, thank you all for watching, and a double thank you to all my patrons who support the creation of this content, and without whose support, I might not be able to continue to produce videos like this. Thanks again.